Hi, this is Jared from PCGamer.com. I'm back again with another performance analysis, this time of the Destiny 2 beta that just ended this past week. This being a beta, it's important to keep in mind that this is not representative of final performance. Things can and likely will change, hopefully for the better, on all hardware. But let's look at what sort of hardware is required to get acceptable frame rates. Before we get to the actual benchmarks, let's talk quickly about the settings. There are 17 different settings you can tweak, as well as the four presets. And I'll tell you right now, there's only about four settings that are really going to affect performance. Those four settings are anti-aliasing, screen space, ambient occlusion, depth of field, and shadow quality. Everything else generally has a minor impact on performance. I use the highest preset for my high-end testing, except I turned off multi-sample anti-aliasing because the performance impact is just too great. And Bungie themselves says this is a work in progress. So that being the case, I opted for SMAA, which is a post-processing technique that has a relatively modest 5% or so impact on performance, and it looks quite good. Basically, I'm testing at 1080p medium, and then the rest of the resolutions, I will use the highest preset, only I will drop anti-aliasing to SMAA. So starting with 1080p medium testing, we've got the 1050 Ti, the RX 564 gig, a 1063 gig and an RX 574 gig. And what should be immediately obvious here is that the NVIDIA cards are easily beating their AMD counterparts. Hopefully AMD can improve their drivers over the coming two months because right now they're definitely underperforming. In terms of performance here, the RX 560s fails to break 60 frames per second, but it's still definitely playable if you're not super demanding. The GTX 1050 also fails to break 60 frames per second, but all of the rest of the cards, even including older cards like an R9 380 or a GTX 1070 or whatever, they're all doing 60 frames per second or higher and can definitely handle 1080p medium. Moving up to 1080p highest, all of the cards take a pretty decent hit to performance, except for the fastest cards like the 1080 and the 1080 Ti. All of the cards are still hitting more than 30 frames per second, though the AMD cards are definitely falling off the pace set by the Nvidia cards. If you're one of those lucky gamers that happens to have a 144Hz refresh rate monitor, you're basically looking at GTX 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti if you want to come anywhere near hitting that refresh rate. AMD's Vega 56 and Vega 64 also perform pretty well. They're slower than the 1070, and with their current pricing, I wouldn't recommend them. But down the road, we may actually see drivers improve performance to where they'll be matching the 1070 and 1080 like they normally do. Once we hit 1440p, Obviously, you're going to need high-end hardware if you want to run that at maximum quality like I'm doing here. Basically, all the cards fail to hit 60 frames per second, with the exception of the 1070, the 1080, and the 1080 Ti. RX 56 and Vega, they come relatively close, and with just a few tweaks, they easily get above 60 frames per second. Some of the slower cards, like a 1060 or an RX 580, they're going to need a lot more tweaks to your graphics setting, and in some cases, they still might not get 60 frames per second. Given that 1440p was already quite demanding, it's no surprise that running 4K at maximum quality is going to tax all of the graphics cards. Even the mighty 1080 Ti isn't able to hit 60 frames per second at maximum quality. You could easily get there by turning off like depth of field or turning down shadow quality or some of the other tweaks. But at max quality, you're going to need SLI 1080s or SLI 1080 Ti's if you want to maintain 60 frames per second. Now that we've looked at the graphics cards, let's also talk about CPUs for a minute. I'm going to look at just four CPUs here, although I've got tests for other ones. What we find is that with these four CPUs, Intel, once again, holds a lead. That's not too uncommon. But that lead really only applies if you're running at lower quality settings. So once you're at like 1440p, the lead becomes a lot more tenuous. At 4K, basically all of the cards perform the same. And again, this is only with a high-end GTX 1080 Ti. If you had something like an RX 580 or a GTX 1060, I did some additional testing there, and the performance differences, even at 1080p medium, they start becoming far less substantial. So that's our look at Destiny 2 beta performance, and let's quickly talk about the big picture. If you're looking to buy a system and you really want to just play Destiny 2 on PC, your best bet right now, it's definitely going to be one of the NVIDIA graphics cards. A GTX 1060 level card will handle 1080p high. If you want 1440p, I'd look at the 1070. And if you're one of those 4K gamers, you're really going to need to look at the 1080 and 1080 Ti. On the AMD side, performance can be pretty good, but given the price of the AMD cards right now, they're just not 
delivering the performance that you'd want, at least not in Destiny 2, but even if their performance matches the NVIDIA cards, it's also worth mentioning that their power requirements are higher pretty much across the board. On the CPU side of things, really, from what I've seen, you can run Destiny 2 on everything from an older generation Core i3, i5, the AMD FX series. They all provide enough performance that you can play the game. If you want to play it at really high frame rates, you're going to need a faster CPU. But most people, if you're just looking for 60 frames per second, this is a console port and it looks like their CPU requirements are relatively light. As I mentioned at the start, this is a beta. Things can change. So none of this advice is final. But there you have it. Once again, thanks to MSI for providing our graphics cards, the Aegis TI3 desktop PC that we use for all of the desktop testing, as well as additional motherboards for testing different CPUs. It's worth noting that there is currently an MSI promotion going on with NVIDIA cards, and if you buy a GTX 1080, GTX 1080 Ti, or a notebook with a GTX 1080, you can get a free copy of Destiny 2 when it comes out on October 24th. That gives AMD two months to address the driver situation, hopefully improve performance, and bring their cards up closer to parity with NVIDIA, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. We'll revisit performance once the game actually leaves beta, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, and tune in to PCGamer.com for additional gaming news and coverage.